Hello and welcome to 4000 and Counting, brought to you by Hurricane E-Bikes. I'm Wati, this is Mark, and today we're joined by Guildford Flames captain Brett Ferguson. Fergie, thanks for joining us in your off-season. It's a pleasure to have you on 4000 and Counting, mate. Welcome. Yeah, thanks for having me, guys. I'm excited to have a good good chat with you guys and talk hockey and whatever else you want to get into. Yeah, this is going to be fun. We chatted a little bit off air there. We're going to have some Slovakia stories coming your way, people. We know that you love you love some Euro stories on this podcast. We've had uh, we had Kev Tanzi on. He's just signed with the Steelers. He dropped a couple of interesting tidbits about playing in Czech and playing in Slovakia. And obviously, you've got a you've got a different route, but. You have had experiences in Europe. You've had experiences down under. You've played in the coast. You've played in the dub. You've played a bit. Of, you've played a bit of uni hockey. I. This is going to be interesting because obviously you played at so many different levels. It's going to be good to pick your brain. the uh, The starting point for yourself is it this stereotypical Canadian guy born with skates on plays hockey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pretty, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I grew up, I grew up in a real small town, uh, like. You know, the town I'm from has about 450 people in it. And, you know, uh, I wish it was the same in the UK, but it's not like we we have our own rink there, you know, for 450 people. So uh, it's, it's cold in there, but it's awesome. Like I could get on the ice whenever I wanted. So like you said, I'm, you know, starting hockey when I'm three, four years old and just kind of, that's what you do. You play hockey in the summer, base, or uh, hockey in the winter, baseball in the summer. Was there like a family connection or anything? Obviously, like most Canadians do get into it, but any family or friends, because of being such a small town, any of that sort of family and friends play prior to you, or did you just go for it yourself? Um, you know, my obviously my all my family played at some point, like not really a high, high level. Like my my dad had played some junior A hockey. Um, that was about it. Um, but yeah, it's you know, we're we're close to uh we're close to the city, Regina, Saskatchewan. So, um, you know, you always go watch the WHL and you see the guys that have moved on to the NHL and stuff. So you just, it's just what you do. Like you just become obsessed with hockey and you know, it's what you do. Let's, let's show how Canadian you are. How close by is that close by Regina? <laughs> well, it's about 40 kilometers. Uh, oh, that's that? not too bad. Yeah. <laughs> it's not, it's not bad. Um, but yeah, it's funny, like, because I, you know, I go to Saskatoon and I say, oh, it's just going to Saskatoon for the day or something. It's like a two and a half hour drive. But, you know, I know people in the UK that like haven't seen their parents because they live on the other side of London or something. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's, too- it's not that far. <laughs> but I so, saw last, last summer I was actually here. I was in line to, to maybe get a job in, uh, in Canada coaching. And we, we were talking, we were talking to to the guy and he goes uh you know like th- this is what's in the town blah 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 he's like the walmart's just like the next town over and i was like okay cool how far it's like fucking 95 minutes i was like what <laughs> that's not that's the other side of fucking birmingham for me mate like <laughs> yeah. what are you talking about there's yeah. about three million shops between here and the other side of birmingham and he's like yeah <laughs> just the next town over i was like nah i think my missus was just a, just had the baby or something. Like we'd have been in the middle of nowhere. But some of yeah. those spots out there in those rural quiet places out in North America are unbelievable. What was that? Was it like growing up where you grew up in such a small town? Yeah, like the the town's called Vibank. It's tiny. Like we don't even have uh they don't even have paved streets there. It's just like gravel streets. Um so it it's a different experience. Like I could do, you know, we could do whatever we want type of thing. We could I have a, I had a key to the rink so I could go in there and, you know, whenever I wanted it, you know, it's all farmers and it, it's a, it's a different experience, especially now being in Guilford where, you know, a lot of the people there uh, have never seen something like that. Um, so it, it's great. Like, you know, the, I think about the things I did when I was like 16 years old, where you just, grab a case of beer and drive around the back roads and that was like what we did for fun you know well (laughs) that's funny because when you brought up in 450 people is there any cops no no cops great (laughs) just what a life they gotta gotta come from the next town one of the next towns over so um so does the town kind of police itself then in that sense well yeah i mean it's just everyone knows everyone so if uh something went wrong everyone would and little town, so everyone would come together, right? 
immediately they'd, they'd all know who who did it i guess yeah who who was your favorite player growing up i was a, actually oddly enough i was a big paul korea fan i don't know how that came That's i think i just awesome. like i liked uh yeah i That's i mean so i loved good. them like i i guess i watched those uh, mighty ducks movies as a kid and i became a, a ducks fan and oh i just loved them like and then obviously when he got knocked out in the playoffs and then came back and was streaking down the wing and took that fucking undertaker rising from the dead (laughs) yeah yeah he was he was awesome and um you know there was a couple guys that had played for like the regina pats the dub the dub team here uh that i just loved to like the uh, there's a guy named barrett jackman he was a defenseman yeah Yeah, yeah. Um, I, i saw that guy like you know, all but kill people on the ice. Like he was, he was essentially like, a man playing against yeah. like a bunch of like <laughs> yeah. 16, 17, 18 year old kids. He was huge. Yeah. Yeah. And so that like, and then they had these other guys that had ended up playing in the NHL, you know, they had Garth Murray and uh, you guys, yeah, I don't know if you guys would know all these guys, but it, yeah, it was yeah. like all these oh, rough and tough players that were just like, Oh, I just loved watching them play. To be fair, that's when I watched the NHL, man. I'm like, when it was a lot more punchy facey, you'll get me tuning into ice hockey a lot more. The way yeah. the game's gone, don't get me wrong, like you watch these guys now and they fucking wheel and they dangle and it's so fast. Yeah. Give me a Wade Belak v Eric Ken center ice over some <laughs> fucking third line guy going coast to coast. Like, I'm sorry. Yeah, it's crazy. Even even like uh from when I started in the the Western Hockey League to, you know, by the time I finished, like it had it had changed a lot and then like now you look back and you know we had on on my teams in in red deer like we had like two or three just just like tough guys you know like they they were just there to to fight you know just absolute yeah. meat sticks eh? yeah like they <laughs> couldn't even they could barely even skate and you know now they're uh, you know they're playing in the one of the best junior leagues in the world and they're like just going out there to fight the other team's tough guy (laughs) and now it's you know now it's like okay it's speed it's skill and it's it is great you know the games obviously i think it's it's good i i feel bad for a lot of those guys in that era that have have or or now are dealing with like the the head injuries and the aftermath of that um but i wish there was a little bit more of like a, a balance between the two where we could have we could have it all. We could have our cake and eat it too, you know. The interesting thing that comes down to the head injuries, and obviously we've had Dr. Victoria Silverwood on here, Cam Johnson, Bodie Wood, um, yeah. Rose Hill. Like, I don't know the list goes on. We've had some, most of them. And you've had you've had plenty of fights yourself as well. I I can attest to this. I've never had a conky from getting punched in the face. I have had plenty from getting fucking hit though. <laughs> yeah, it's true. Or making you... hits. One of the worst ones was making a hit. Yeah, for sure. You watch watch back like the way the guys used to fight. Like they just had no regard for their own safety. No, so yeah. no like, defense. Yeah, like well, I was the other night. I was just watching like some Ty Domi old Ty Domi fights, My and like favorite. he would just he throw like sixty punches in a fight, like. Now, you know, if I when if I get in a fight, I'm like, how can I not get hit in the face and hopefully land one or two, <laughs> you know? I, know? I quite like to toe it's, to toe. I was, I was quite partial to a toe to toe. It is fun. Yeah. It is yeah. I don't know, there's something about it. Just the crowd is so pumped. If you get in a good like 10, 11, 12, 13, and then you're both going, like there's no one. Yeah. Even if you these these people that say they're not fight fans yet they still get up and cheer when it goes on like i'm oh yeah i know that the illegal moving away from it but when you look at like successful teams that have had runs in recent years guys like tom wilson with the caps when they were fucking legit in the playoffs there there is guys that can do it both matty and brady this year they, yeah. they they can mix it up don't get me wrong they're not going out and fighting ryan reeves and no they, should, they they don't need to be but do you think more teams are going to start be looking towards guys that have got a, I've got all the skill, they've got the grip, but they got the fuck you as well. They'll they, they won't get pushed around. Do you think more teams will start looking at guys like that? Uh, absolutely. Like you know, there's a guy that I skate with here in Regina, and like his name's Tanner Janot, yeah. and he's 
he's a tough, tough kid. And he, uh, you know, you look at what Tampa gave up to trade for him. Like they gave up a first rounder, a second rounder, you know, and he, he can, he can put the puck in the net. He didn't have a good, uh, as good of a year last year, but like, he's absolutely tough as nails. And he, he, you know, they gave up a lot to get a player that, you know, maybe will score you 20 goals, but he'll, he'll fight like anyone and he hits and he's scrappy and he'll go to the front of the net. So I think, especially with, you know, what's happened now with Kachuk and, you know, like that's a very, very, very valuable player to your team. Like you can't, you can't replicate that kind of player, especially when he's going to put the puck in the back of the net, tell you to fuck off and then beat up one of your guys, you know, like that's (laughs) how do you, you know, that's, that's the perfect player right there. It it is. I'm I'm not one for wanting like the meat out and out meat sticks back. I don't want to see guys coming over here from the fucking Quebec League from ten years ago and just yeah. playing punchy facey for the sake of it. But I also watched games last year at times. I was like, how is something like this flying? I know a goalie gets a bump, you know, a fucking guy gets hit late from behind or whatever. And then just guys standing around. I'm not a fan of that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it's 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 tough though, you know, like to to be a guy that's in that role that that has the capability to do that, and then you know something like that happens, and then you you put your team down or something, and all of a sudden you lose the game. Like guys are always worried about their jobs and whatever. Like I, I'm I'm on your side here. Like I think you know if something happens that that needs to be answered to, it should be answered to, and like. It can be quick. It's just it's kind of sending that message that hey, like that's not gonna that's not gonna fly. Um, I just but, also want to know, like, if someone goes knee on knee with me or hits me from behind or runs me into the goal, that one of my fucking boys have got my back. Like more so than the actual fight itself. As a teammate, yeah. that's something that I would have. I always prided myself on looking after the boys like that. They knew if I yeah. was on the ice and someone done that, I would, I would answer the bell. And I always appreciated the fuck out of this. So if I had someone got cheap shot, someone cheap shot me, sorry, and I had one of my boys look out for me, like then I knew, like that's a proper teammate for me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for sure. But you know, it's it's the way that, it's the way guys are coming up now. Like, uh, you know, the way they're they're being coached and taught to play the game in minor hockey or in juniors, as uh, you guys call it. Um, it would be like something that a coach just wouldn't be able to like tell his implement his yeah you know like unless you're in russia yeah yeah and you're <laughs> beating the fucking wheels off each other in the ice rink bar after practice yeah you fight a bear in the woods as part of your um, <laughs> see i saw a guy on instagram this week a russian guy wrestling a bear in the woods I'm like, yeah dudes are yeah. crazy i think we Absolutely saw the same crazy <laughs> yeah yeah so you know like even even, you know, being a, a, a kind of a, an older guy on the, I don't feel like I am maturity wise, but being, being an older guy, uh, you just see that the, the mentality has shifted a little bit from the younger guys coming into pro, like it, you know, it's more so, you know, I, 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 I don't mean to say this in a derogatory way to these guys, but it's more so like looking out for themselves type of thing then uh um, like maybe sitting on the bus with their headphones on like yeah, as opposed just, to playing some snaps and yeah you know, a bit of poker or whatever yeah it's just the, it's just the way it is and like i i totally understand it you know that's how, how people grow up now like um you know i'm i'm not a i'm not a video gamer uh so i don't understand how the guys can just sit there and play call of duty for eight hours when you know some guys are out at the pub like having a good laugh and stuff like it just doesn't make sense to me but that's yeah, that sounds that's... like a nightmare <laughs> that's what it is i'd have such bad fomo if i found out all the boys were in the pub and i was sat at home playing fucking playstation in my box of shorts i'd be like <laughs> I'd, I'd have like serious fomo i'd be like what am i doing with my life right now yeah yeah exactly i get it all the, the time is, the thing is, what some of these boys don't realize, a lot of this shit stops when you're done, man. Obviously, mm-hmm. we got this podcast, so we get good opportunities to, you know, see the boys and maybe have a couple of sociable beverages. But for a lot of these guys, they'll stop playing and they'll go and get real jobs. And all all those times that they've sat at home and missed out, they might look back and go, you know what, maybe I should have went out with the boys and had some fun and heard some stories. Because, you know, when the beers start flowing or 
it could be anything. Beers play a bit of pool. The chat starts and you start start telling the stories from the old times and wherever you played junior or wherever you played last. And it's fucking brilliant fun. Go further, go faster, get fitter. Subscribe today. Hurricane e-bikes have a great range of bikes available on the e-bike subscription plans. The cruiser e-bikes are perfect for beach rides, long distance rides, or just everyday use. The fat bike e-bikes look great and can cope with the toughest terrain, perfect for off-road adventures. The hybrids range are perfect for about town, everyday use and leisurely rides with the family. Take your ride to the next level with the mountain bike and get ready for your next power assisted adventure. Oh, it's, it's unbelievable. Like, you know, it's, it, you get, you get in those situations where you're out with the boys and um, it's like hard to even get a word in because everyone's got something to say. It's all funny. You're trying not to laugh too hard. Cause like you want to say what you're going to say, but everyone's talking and like, I, I can, you know, that's the one thing that worries me the most about when I'm done playing is like, you know, not being able to just talk shit with the boys for yeah. hours on end. And then, mate, this is Mark. You you can attest to this. Like having the podcast is great, just to shoot the shit. And because oh, it's love it. different guys from different teams, and you can't you kind of got uh you obviously once we tell some stories on here, but then generally once the once the camera goes off, we hear a few more stories and and, and <laughs> we hear hear what's really been going down and, and then some fun stuff. So I mean, there's still that locker room vibe and and it's good fun, but it's it's the one thing your career goes past real real quick, and the boys ain't there forever. Yeah, you get to hang out and then guys have babies and get married and move house and move away. And then before you know it, like you might get to see two guys a year from that team and a guy from over there. So just make the most of it, lads, while you can. can. But also, there is the other side of it. It is a lot more professional now. So it's doing it at the right times. And obviously, with you being captain in Guildford, did you have any sort of say or did you say like, yeah, boys, maybe you can go out on a Monday or whatever, but you, you need to be ready to go here? Yeah. I mean, there's, that's, that's one of the toughest parts about being in that, in that role is that you don't want to ever, you know, think the guys look at you and say, Oh, I wonder what Ferg's going to think if we're doing this or something. So, um, but yeah, sometimes, you know, you need to say to the guys like, Hey, like, you know, we're we're in a spot here where we're fighting for a league title like maybe we gotta i know we all love ha having a beer and we all love you know going out and getting after it but uh you know maybe we gotta tone it down a little bit and make sure we're ready this weekend um you know my my first my first couple of years in guilford there was like a lot of that uh <laughs> and i you know guys going out you know the night before two nights before a game and stuff and like uh, maybe maybe when I was younger but now no chance like <laughs> I have a night out and I need like two days to recover so um and obviously with being in in that position and uh you know understanding a little bit more from the organization standpoint about where we're trying to get and what we're trying to what we're trying to accomplish uh, I guess it's my job to try and convey that to the to the guys like as much as this is a, an awesome life experience um, and we're, you know, <clears throat> we're in a great city, we're around London, uh, we're in a great country, uh, it's it's awesome, we're still being paid to do a job and if you can't show up and do your job the, to the best of your ability, then like you got to make better choices. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> Mark, I want to I take it back to the WHO if don't, if don't mind. Yeah, go for it. I wanted right. to hear this. You got a player with Ryan Nugent Hopkins. Easy for me to say. Ryan Nugent Hopkins. How was it playing with him and in, uh, in dub? Yeah, he was he was unbelievable. He was an awesome player. He was actually uh, you know we billeted together a little bit, um, and like when he came in at he came in at 15 years old. You know before he was even eligible to to play uh, full time, and he was like we're just like holy, this guy is unbelievable. And then at 16, he was even, you know, he was a little bit better. And then at, by the time he was 17, we're just like, well, better enjoy this now because I'm never going to be playing in the same league as him again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's gone. Yeah. So, um, yeah, he was awesome. Like, just the vision and, you know, the, the the ability to make plays. And, you know, it's like guys like that, especially at that level, uh, you know, when, when there are certain players that are just that much better than – 
most other guys like it's like they get the puck and the game just like slows down it's like everyone's just like okay what's this guy gonna do and then all of a sudden he does something sick you know so uh that's, it was Tony awesome. Hunt, the best british player ever that's, that's exactly what he did yeah he just brought you down to his pace just and you're like, what just happened he's just yeah. fucking threaded the needle through three sticks because it, it he was famous for the for like the button hook delay coming in for the zone, kind of a bit like Gretzky. Or yeah. the other thing that he was very similar in Gretzky was he he had his office behind the net and he could fucking find anybody from anywhere. Yeah, and that that was just what you're saying there. It's that ability to slow the game down. How yeah. how how like much different is it when you see someone like him versus I don't know a guy coming out of college? Like, can you explain the difference? Yeah, it's it's tough. It's tough to say because, you know, like there's guys that are just that good, that young. And I think, you know, you're starting to see a lot of guys coming out of college now that are obviously like real high end NHL players. But I think, you know, those those superstar type players like they're so good, so young. So they got to play in the best league possible. And so they got to go to the, that major junior route. Um so it's it's just it's different right like you see nuge or whatever like we're playing 72 game schedule so you're just seeing it consistently and then in college those guys are playing like 35 games so everyone's gung-ho and some guys are 24 years old so they're not you know you got nuge and these guys you know like i think back in into junior like probably jordan everly was the most impressive player so and I, nice. you know i i grew up with him so I had kind of seen it, but then you get to like that level where you're playing against them in the WHL and um, it's like, you're just, you're just trying not to get dashed up when he's on the ice. You're like, this guy's, <laughs> or I got to get off. <laughs> I see him come out. I got to get off quick. Someone else, <laughs> someone else can take the minus, but you know, in, in red deer, we had like, like Nuge was awesome, but you know, we had some real good players like uh, Matt Dumba and like yeah. this guy would abs he would just just like he would just crush guys like like some kids you know he's you know Matt, Matty was when I played with him was only like 16 17 years old and, and he was just absolutely running people over and I'm like I don't think this this guy might be dead like he just killed this guy. <laughs> just scraping then, guys off the ice yeah and then you know we had like like our goalie was uh Darcy Kemper and he's like this Nice. Six foot five, six foot five, you know, goalie, and like no one can score on him. Even in practice, you're like, well, I got no confidence now because I didn't score a single goal in practice, you know, because this guy's unbelievable. So we, yeah, we just had he's had a hell of a career, right? Eh? Like NHL wise. Yeah. He, 356 you know, games. That's good. Yeah, and I bet you he's backed up for another 350 games or whatever. Yeah. Like he's been He's been in the league for probably the better part of 10 years. 12 years. So, yeah, exactly. There you go. So, and, you know, he's he's one of those guys where you you could just see it. Like, he would, he's always working hard. He was, like, focused, determined. Um, you're like, you just kind of knew that nothing was going to stop him from, from getting there. Like, who, he's done. Sorry, go ahead. Who would have... Who were the best players that you were facing then? And where was like the best place to actually go and play there? Oh, well, all the all the rinks are obviously super nice. I, I always enjoyed coming back. I played for Red Deer, obviously. I come back home to Regina. And I so I always enjoyed coming back and playing there. But you know, you go into some of these these other rinks like Everett was this place that always had so many fans. Uh that's a that they're by right by Seattle. Um you know, even the small town Saskatchewan, like Prince Albert, like it's like there's nothing, there's literally nothing else to do but go to the dub game. So you get these rinks that are just packed. Um, in terms of like the best players, like like I said, Eberly was unbelievable. Then you got, um, you know, like Tyler Ennis was like, yes, just look look up on YouTube sometime the game he scored six goals in the dub. And it's like every one of them was absolute highlight reel. Like he was awesome. And then you get these like high, high end defensemen you play against that, you know, you just, they just took over games. 
like no problem, you know. Um, you know, I think thinking back, like Tyson Berry and really good. you know, some of these guys that played in Kelowna, like Kelowna was always a team that just seemed to spit out NHL defensemen like nothing. Um so you know, like Mark Stone just won the cup, like him playing in Brandon, like he could barely even skate, but he had the best hands and like the best shot. Like, like this guy was unstoppable. So there's just you could go through every team and look at these guys and be like, well, that guy's unbelievable and he's still doing it in the nhl and this guy's unbelievable he's still doing it in the nhl so it's hard it's hard to pick really yeah with with you um playing your years in the whl did you ever get a sniff at any nhl training camps or anything like that yeah i i mean i i always get bugged because i went to uh i went to edmonton for two training camps and everyone said oh you're just uh this brought you along with with nuge as as nuge's uh little chaperone (laughs) because <laughs> uh we were you know we were roommates and uh good buddies there and in, in red deer and um so when he got drafted there it was like you know i i did have a good year and like i i guess i i think i deserved to be invited but it was just funny because it was just kind of like i get there and then you know all the fuss was about nuge and then oh and there's uh his teammate they brought his teammate too <laughs> they just bring his so, yeah and those were those were super those were awesome experiences like you know just seeing you know firstly you walk into these locker rooms and they're like these unbelievable you know setups with you got the you know all kinds of hot tubs and cold tubs and saunas and steam rooms and you know four massage guys and doctors and trainers like you know the one year I was there was the year that after they had drafted uh Nuge so Nuge had already played a year and then Yakupov was like the next guy coming in and I remember like leaving the training camp and you, you know but then I was I was off to the University of Alberta to play and uh I was like can I get some do you think I could get a couple of sticks like I don't think the U of A has like ordered my my sticks yet and the trainer is just like buddy this is the nhl you don't have to ask <laughs> so <laughs> i go in there and i grab like four sticks and the guy's like is that that's all you need so i go back and i grab like another four <laughs> <laughs> so I got, like, I got, like one of yakupovs i got like a taylor hall stick i got one of nuges i'm just like grabbing all this stuff i'm like a kid in a candy store i'm like going into the workout room and i'm grabbing like like reebok shorts and shirts and like <laughs> shoes and i'm just stuff in this bag as fast as i can before someone tells me to stop and they're just like they just don't care it's a, it's the nhl it's like it's not it's unreal you know and then you're going to these rookie tournaments and you're hopping on a, a team plane and you're just you know for me coming from like where i came from i didn't i don't I haven't seen any of that stuff you know jumping on a private jet and going to a, a game you know going down to <clears throat> penticton for a tournament or whatever well, like it's yeah <laughs> it was awesome so like that's a an experience i'll I'll never forget and definitely understand why guys that get to that level do everything they can to never have to leave oh yeah yeah you, once you're there you want to stay right yeah um you had a cup of coffee with utah grizzlies before you went to university of alberta how did that work did you kind of start the season before school or well, that was, I guess that was when I was coming off of that, uh, that one training camp with the, the, the first training camp I went to with the Oilers. I didn't, I, I was recruited to go to the school and whatever, but I went to training camp and I actually stuck around in training camp long. I made it through main camp and into the exhibition season. So I was in like end of September by the time uh, I got sent, the, by the time they cut me and um, I had already missed like a four weeks of school. So I talked to the U of A and they're like, yeah, well, you can try and catch up or you can just come at Christmas time. And the way it works with the WHL with your scholarship and everything is you can go play into, uh, professionally until Christmas. Um, so I was like, okay. So I went down to the American League team. I wasn't on contract or anything. So got a little bit of a look there and then got sent down to the East Coast. And I ended up in Utah and... Um, I ended up breaking my hand like six or seven games in and I was playing with a cast on and I was just not really putting up any numbers or anything. So I 
decided, well, I got, I got to go back to school. And I guess I kind of had it drilled in my head that I was like, you know, you'd got this scholarship for playing in the WHL and you should go take advantage of that. And then it obviously ended up being one of the best decisions I ever made because went to the, went to play at the, in, in U sports and won some national championships, got my degree, had a lot of fun, ton of oh, fun. Yeah. So, yeah. so <laughs> that's kind of how that all came about. What well, um, what was the the kind of decision to go to U of A? Was there other schools on the table, and obviously University of Alberta is a fucking massive school. Like, it, even, yeah, even Brits know about that one. Um, what, yeah. what was what was the situation leading into that? So yeah, they 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 they, they do their recruiting process. Like the all the teams, like they'll call you. Um, you know, obviously my my home city here, Regina, they have uh they have a team, but like they're brutal um <laughs> I, I didn't want to go there even though you know i had a lot of good buddies nice. there. i had a lot of good buddies there and everything um i talked to some other schools i flew out east to check out university of new brunswick and i uh, went to montreal to see mcgill and then you know i i came we had such a good team in junior and we didn't win and i thought you know i just want to win something so I was like, I think U of A, you know, at that point, and I think still have won more national championships than anyone. So I was like, well, you know, I'm going to go to U of A and I'm going to win a national championship. And that was how it ended up working out. We won twice. So that's kind of why I decided that. And, you know, on the other side of it, it, it is academically, it's a very good school. What did you, so uh, what did you study at school? I'm a finance finance and statistics major oh okay so you love all that yeah 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 so i mean I, it, it was it was hard and it, it, but i'm hopeful that it's something that i can use when i'm done that'll that could hopefully keep me involved in hockey if it's not a coaching role i could be on on that side of things you know like business operations or something because that would be ultimately i'd love to stay involved in hockey much much the same as uh our last guest, Craig Peacock. I was he, just thinking that, yeah. Yeah, it's exactly, it sounds exactly what he was talking Not about. Not the coaching, but going down different avenues within hockey. It's always interesting to hear. Yeah, you know, I I always wonder, you know, when people ask me, you know, if I'd like to get involved in the coaching when I'm done, um, sure, it'd be great. It'd be awesome. But it, you know, coaches are hired to be fired and maybe not so much, uh, at the say university or NCAA level, um, those guys can stick around a bit longer, but those jobs are tough to come by. Um, but you know, like look at the elite league, like you got teams that are going through coaches every second year, look at uh, the NHL. Like it's like, if you're lucky enough to get one of those jobs, you're, you got three years to win something. If you don't, then you're fired, you know? Um, I could put up with that at the NHL level, but maybe yeah, not. I a, mean, that's that's not a bad gig. <laughs> maybe, you know, if you know if you're in in major junior and you know you're or junior A and you got to move to some small town Saskatchewan and grind it out to hopefully get a job somewhere else to hopefully not get fired from that job to hopefully you know it's it seems like a tough a tough grind. Not to say that it wouldn't be awesome and rewarding and everything, but it would be tough. Peaks talks about like you have to then travel again. Like, if yeah. Coaching, like if you're if you're coaching, you got to be at every practice. You got to be at every meeting or whatever. If you're up yeah. top, if you're up top I, in the gym, yeah, you're gonna be busy in the summer, and you, you're gonna be busy like schmoozing guys and girls, and you know trying to get marketing deals and sponsorship deals and all those types of things over the line. But ultimately, you're not gonna be on the road for fucking four and a half days like yeah that's brutal yeah for sure i gotta i have a ton of respect for coaches and assistant coaches like the the amount of work they have to do now um you know with the the video and getting guys prepared because if you're not doing it and other teams doing it then they'll probably beat you um you know riding the bus being there at the ring with the guys uh you know basically doing everything that a player does except you don't get to be part of the boys you know yeah. so it's kind of like i got I, I do have a ton of respect for coaches because it's 
it's a grind. Well, go yeah, going back to uh, University of Alberta, um, you played with Mr. Reddick, your yep. teammate from Guildford. Did you both came together at the same time? Is that correct? Yeah. So, well, how it worked out was like I I was in France my first year pro. Um, well, my first I guess full year pro and. I went, signed with this team. We're in the Champions League. Um, we're playing Champions League games in Finland. And I I ended up like tearing the labrum in my hip. So, uh, I had to get surgery. And uh, the recovery was eight months. So I knew right away that I was going to miss the whole season. I would go to the doctor in France. And the guy's like, hey, you know, I can barely understand what he's saying. He doesn't speak English. And so he's like writing things on Google Translate. And he's like, tell me this. And um, lucky enough, I have a cousin back home who is an orthopedic surgeon. So I send him the scans. I'm like, this can't be right. Like, I think I just need like some physio or something like, yeah, I'm in some pain. But like, I, there's no way like I got the same injury that, you know, 70 year old ladies get from slipping on ice, you know. So I send him that and he's like yeah no honestly you're you're kind of fucked like you need you need this surgery if you ever want to play again like you're gonna to have to get this surgery so I, so i say okay um they got me booked in to do it next week and he's like uh i would feel a lot better if you came home and, and did it i'll get you i'll get you right in here so i talked to the team they're okay with that uh, well obviously they're very okay with that because then they don't have to pay That's for it though, right yeah yeah so I come back, my cousin does another scan. And uh, so he's going to do the, the surgery on my right hip. He said, you know what? You're going to miss a whole season. Like you got some damage in your other hip. So I ended up getting surgery on both hips and kind of being off skates for like, well, probably close to 10 months. By the time I got back and got rehabbed and everything, it was actually the elite league season had started and that was Guilford's first year. So I had a couple of guys that I knew from school like Cruz Reddick, uh, Jesse Craig, who was the captain of the Guilford flames. And I'd played with him at school and Brennan Yadlowski. A couple other guys were there at Guilford. Uh, there was a connection between Stan Marple, who was a, uh, his yeah, numbers yeah. retired. Guilford. He was a, one of these tough guys we were talking about yeah. earlier. Um, so Stan had kind of like, set up that connection he said you know it's a great place to play they're in the elite league now they'll treat you good the housing's good everything so we all say yeah awesome that's good let's go and um so then i signed in guilford and i wasn't able to play the first like six or seven games i think because i still hadn't been medically cleared to play to take the contact yet and then from there you know just loved it and you know jesse craig stuck around for three years cruz was there for three years a um, couple other guys like Jordan Rowley and um, TJ Foster had come in and they were all guys that I played at school with. So we had like this kind of like U of A thing going on there where they, all these guys were coming there. And, um, you know, I think it was working for Guilford because they were kind of expected to be, uh, you know, a lot, a bottom place team as they came into the league. And, you know, I don't think we've ever finished lower than fifth uh, since we've been in the elite league. Um so, yeah, it was just a, that was kind of the connection there. And then, you know, Cruz being one of my, I was, I was in his wedding party last summer. Cruz is one of my best buddies. Uh, it's a shame he's not still around because, man, that guy was a hell of a player. I, uh, I, I again, I, I ask it the way I ask it every time. So one I, uh, I love to ask the most of the imports, what's your, what's your first experience of walking in the locker room and getting to play with a bunch of British dudes? <laughs> well, I love the banter. Yeah, I just right. didn't listen, you know, like kill or, just, kill or be killed, right? Yeah, I just love it. Like, you know, we've we've had such good, you know, I'm sure I'm sure they're all great. Like all the all the British players, all the local guys, like every team, I'm sure they're awesome. Uh, but I feel like we've had just unbelievable guys in Guilford, um, in terms of our our local players, our our British players, you know, um this last year with you know Lacko and uh you know Benny O'Connor and um you know they're just they're just and and Owen Griffiths like they're just hilarious like there there's always something to laugh about you know and 
when I first got there, it was kind of the, the guys that had come up, who you guys you would know well, you know, Jez and yeah. uh, Kevin Phillips and Benny Campbell, Andy McKinney, um, you know, all, all those guys, like, they were just hilarious and, like, so helpful like it you know it, it's not a it's not a huge culture shock coming from canada because you can speak the language and everything but like rick you think the kid from Vibank, saskatchewan knew how to take a train from guilford to london waterloo but you know <laughs> <laughs> i got i got mike will meeting me at the station telling me you know this is where we're gonna go i'll take you around i'll show you around london you know if you know it's so it's just they were awesome by the way, shout out Mike Will's photography page if you're not already following it. The guy's got like 219,000 yeah. followers right now, killing it. Yeah, hey, Mike Will, he uh, I hope he sees this. He still comes to the Guilford Flames Christmas party. I, I invite him every year. I love that. He'll be like off shooting a uh, doing a DJ shoot for uh, who's he usually with? He's with like uh, oh, what's the guy's name? Uh, I'll think of it, but like a big name DJ, it'll be like doing his shoot in like Dubai and then he'll like fly back to London, come to our Christmas party and then fly back to freaking I don't know, Bali. Nice. And, yeah. Yeah. It. <laughs> yeah. He's, he's got it going on. He's awesome. And he comes to, he comes every once in a while and it'll be like driving a Bentley that he's doing a shoot for Bentley. So he's got this, bentley and i jump in this thing and i'm just ripping around the spectrum parking lot because i'm Jeez. too scared to take it out <laughs> Scar oh scarier driving it around the, the spectrum parking lot with all those pillars yeah. in there i would have been yeah. getting that thing out of the spectrum parking lot <laughs> as quick as possible he's the, he's the only guy that shows up to practice with a nicer car than peter check yeah oh but he's he's in the news right now That's he's just just moved over to oxford what's uh do you, do you have any sort of like relationship with Peter? Obviously, when I was there, he was skating a little bit and he was obviously around the room because they they had uh, a lot of friends with like the Slovaks and the Czech lads. Yeah. Yeah. I know Peter's unreal. Like he, he's just, you know, one of the most famous football goalies of all time. But like I could send him a WhatsApp right now. And if it, if he wanted, if, if I wanted to talk about hockey, he would talk about hockey all day, you know, like he, he loves it. And he's like, just a, just a great guy to like, you get in the dressing room and you know, the voice you can hear is Peter's like, he's just talking to everyone, but it's never about him. Like he wants to ask you about you. Uh, he wants to talk about the NHL. He wants to talk about, you know, what's like, he knows more about the stats from the games on the weekend than I do. It'd be like, Oh, you saw like uh, Arctic beat Glasgow in overtime. Like, and I'll be like, Oh yeah, I think I did see that. <laughs> but Peter know Peter knows it all. Like he's he's such a big hockey fan. Like this guy is the most dedicated human I've ever seen. Like he he speaks like six different languages. He, he plays the drums. Like he you go into I go into his garage at his house and like he's got all this like fake ice set up with these like different things to help him become a better uh, hockey ice hockey goalie. Like he's just. The amount of he's got he just finished his master's in in business like i i don't know how he fits it all in or like what the when you got that much money like what what's the motivation but um he's just a motivated person to like be the best at whatever he's doing you know it's inspiring actually <laughs> was the elite league as uh fuck um was the elite league as good as you thought it'd be or better than you thought it'd be um, you know what it is better than I thought it would be. Uh, but now that I've been in it for six years, like, uh, I'm not surprised whatsoever. Like there's a lot of good players. Um, you know, the, obviously, uh, you guys' opinion might be different than mine, but having so many import spots gives you freedom to bring in top end guys from Canada, from us, from Slovakia, whatever, wherever you can bring these guys in. Um, so it's, you know, it was better than I thought it was going to be when I, when I got here, but, or when I got to Guilford. Um, but since then, I feel like it's just, it's taken steps up and up. Like it's, it's a very good league. Um, you know, I would, I wouldn't hesitate for a second to put us up against 
other leagues around Europe, like, you know, France, Denmark, these leagues, like obviously you start talking about Sweden and Finland, these leagues are yeah, another level. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, in terms of, you know, even Slovakia, like I, you know, we could be good games with those teams. Like it's, it's very good. The, the only piece, and this is what we are talking about off camera that is holding it back is, you know, maybe some of that, uh, ability to get it seen around Europe and around the world a little bit more so that it does become a more lucrative place for even higher end guys to come. And uh, I guess that goes along with, as the game grows, the, the, the budgets get a little bit bigger and um, I think it'll come. It's, it's definitely going to come, you know, it's um, trending in the right direction, right? Yeah, yeah certainly. Like, be... you know, I have, I have friends that come over, uh, you know, and watch and they're like, holy, like, this is freaking good hockey. Like, you guys are, you guys are flying around out there. It's fast. The fans are good. Like, they're like, why would you ever leave? <laughs> yeah. Haven't. <laughs> it's, called, it's called the Dow or Switzerland. That's what I'm talking See, I'm Yeah. <laughs> Bye, Gilford. <laughs> yeah. But you, know, you know what? Like, get, I get offers every year to go to other leagues and like, the the UK is starting to compete. They're competing with money um, in terms of, you know, like when we're talking like Dell two and um, Denmark and France and stuff like that. So uh, to be in a place like the UK where there's not, a, I mean, I've never lived in some of these other cities, so I can't say for sure, but I don't think there's a bad place to live in, in the teams that are in the in elite league. Like, you know, they're all good places, good cities. I, I'm sure the guys are taken care of well with their, their cars and houses and stuff. But like, you know, my first year in, in France, like I was, I was single. There was, it was a town of like 15, 16,000 people. Like, so there was not much to do. Um, you know, like it's, you'd be hard up unless you're in, you know, like you said, Davos, Switzerland or something to find a better place that, with the hockey and the the stuff away from the rink that you're going to like enjoy your time as much. You know what I mean? You like to swing the wrenches with the boys. I know there's a few lads that uh, get out on a, like the Monday club over there in Guildford. You one of the boys <laughs> that gets out. Yeah, I go, I go, I'm probably like 30% of the time. Right. Okay. So yeah. mix, mixing around every like three or four. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if I'm, I don't know if I'm just getting old or something, but like come Monday, if it's not like, 15 degrees and sunny i'm just like yeah i don't need to walk around in the rain for for four hours you know yeah if you don't <laughs> golf in the rain in the uk then you don't fucking golf yeah <laughs> like, i'm a i'm a fair i'm a fair weather golfer which which shows in my score so <laughs> oh yeah mine too yeah. yeah if you really want to hate your life golf in the winter in the uk it's great but if really? someone said, but if someone says you know there's 10 of us going we got a cooler Full of beers, oh, yeah. I'll, I'm there, you know. But you don't, you don't want to miss I'm, that one, right? But yeah, if I'm going, if we're going with like uh, OC and you know Laco, and they wanted to see how good they can play, I'll be like, uh, <laughs> yeah, you know, I'm <laughs> Guys yeah. are shit talking in the group and stuff. I know some of these boys in the elite league, apparently across, obviously I like my golf. So I ask, I normally ask the imports about it or the Brits, whoever, whoever's on. Sounds like there's a there's a few sticks in the elite league at golf actually. Apparently, like Brendan Connolly's unreal. Wiss is good. There's a there's yeah. a few boys that are, are good. Who would you who would you give the title to in Guildford? We had uh, like we had like four guys that were scratch golfers last year. Yeah, that like, but uh, Turner Ripplinger, like he's he's sponsored by like TaylorMade. Um, he's he's awesome uh ian mcnulty was just as good then obviously you know oc is good lack is a good player uh griff can hit a ball um but i'd probably have to say either rippling or mcnulty like they were they're real good golfers and those guys pumped you said that <laughs> yeah they're probably uh probably got like 40 rounds in over the winter you know <laughs> Some good going. Uh, by they the were... way, shout out off the Huzzle podcast. Go check them out on Instagram right now. That's our boy Turner. He's doing bits. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. No, he, he's uh 
Turner's he's good. Like I always try and get on his team when we're doing a scramble. Yeah, he's a good good guy <laughs> to play with on the scramble. Um, yeah. Mark, let's go back to some hockey. What have you got for him? Yeah, so you went to Guildford. You had your first year, and I believe when that season finished, you, you then flew over to Australia. Yeah, and you played in Melbourne. How was yeah. that? That must have, that must have been fun. Yeah, I kind of like. I think I had a new lease on life with my new hips. I was like, I just got to play more hockey. You know, I just missed a season, and uh, I spoke spoke with Guildford, and they're like, Yeah, go ahead and play there because I'd actually already committed to coming back to the Flames the next year. Um, so I went, went over there and, you know, it was like, you, you can't really earn much in terms of money to play. Um, but you know, they gave me a great apartment, you know, a car, um, and the, the, the experience was just like unbelievable. You, you know, one thing I wasn't, I wasn't prepared for though, was, uh, in Melbourne, the winter is actually not very nice at all. <laughs> you know? It yeah. was kind of, not know that. Not as cold as uh as like a UK winter, but like kind of wet and wet and gray like that. So that was my only that was the only drawback was that I felt like I'd just gone through nine or you know seven months of winter and then another four months of winter and then straight back into the UK for another winter. Um <laughs> but it was uh it was good because you know you're playing, you're playing in Sydney, you're playing in Perth, uh, you're playing in Newcastle. You know, and then you get like this time off during the week where like you don't have to go to practice, right? So yeah. um, you fly up to you know the the Great Barrier Reef in uh-huh. in Canada. There. You you just tour around there. <clears throat> you know, you can take a three hour flight over to New Zealand, and we were kind of just like doing everything we could. We were constantly going somewhere, doing something. Um, but yeah, it was an unreal, unreal spot, Australia. Like they, it's, it's great down there. How did you find your game coming back in on the back of playing all summer and not really taking a rest? Did it hinder your game? Did it help your game? Yeah. Well, that's a funny story. Cause I actually did end up getting a rest because, um, the season ended in Australia, like end of August and, I had to do my visa application for my UK work permit from Australia. So are you guys maybe not familiar with this process that the imports have to go through with, but you got to go somewhere. You got to get your fingerprints taken, give them all this, like your, your certificate of sponsorship, your uh, endorsement from the elite league, give them all this stuff. They take your passport and they send it back to you like a week or two later. And you got your thing in there. And then once you show up to the UK, get it stamped and they give you a permanent or a temporary residency card. When I sent my stuff away, when I was in Australia, like they were had to send the passport to, I don't know if they sent it to London or New York or wherever this visa office is that does all of this, they lost my passport. Oh, my. So I was in Australia. My, my girlfriend had already gone back to the UK and I was just stuck there because I didn't have a passport. I couldn't even I couldn't even go home to Canada just to be like just to hang out until. So I was sitting in Australia. There's no ice to skate on because it's coming into summer. I didn't have a passport, so I couldn't travel. I was just kind of stuck there for like a month. But it, like I said, it was coming into summer, so there's worse places to be stuck. I was like surfing every day, okay. just going to the gym. Like nice. it was. It was you know, when I look back at, at the time, it was super stressful because I'm like, fuck, my passport's not coming. Like, Guilford's going to get fed up and move on to another player because, you know, I'd missed like six or seven games type of thing. Um, so I was a little bit stressed at the time. But when I look back on it, I'm like, when else am I ever going to get an opportunity to just hang out in Australia and surf and do whatever I want with an apartment that's paid for? And, you know, like it was it was pretty awesome i look back on it not an ideal situation losing my passport and missing games but um so i did get a rest like i was like off the ice for like five weeks before i came back to guilford and then got back on a tuesday and jumped straight into a wednesday game against belfast and (laughs) it was like (laughs) quick turnaround welcome back so but the, the, the the season itself like that australian season like it's not incredibly taxing because you're just playing on the weekends. You don't have to practice if you don't want to. I would I would go out to practice if I was around. Um, 
but I was usually, you know, off doing something or whatever. Uh, ben Davies was there on the same team as me. Okay. You guys know Ben. Yeah, great guy. Yeah, so we had a great time. Like him and I, we just we just would always be just going to doing something. You know, it was awesome. You uh, you had more experience abroad, but you this time not the the, the beautiful down under. You went to the, the Slovak league, which good hockey, but notoriously shit goes down in that league. How was your experience and did you have any shit to deal with like off the ice or with the staff or anything like that? Oh man. Uh, Slovak. So Slovakia. Yeah. Like that was a, that was a tough year because that was the obviously coming off the pandemic year. Um, and the UK wasn't playing. So everyone's kind of look scrambling around looking for jobs and the UK had kind of told us like, okay, we're going to try and start November 15th. And then it was like December 15th. Okay. We're going to have a half a season starting January 15th. And so I kept pushing off. Like I was going to go down to the East coast league and then just said, well, I want to go to the back to the UK. If that comes back, if that's a thing again. So we get to like December and I'm like, okay, I'm going to, I got to make a decision here. And then the UK finally sent us the email. They're like, we're, we're not going to play this year. We're going to hopefully do a, this elite series in April or whatever, but we're not going to play. So then I spoke with my agent and he's like, well, you know, you can go to the Alps league. There's a couple teams in Slovakia looking for players. Um, or, you know, you go down to the coast and it's like, Oh, well, you know what? Like Slovakia is a good league. Like maybe, maybe I go there and I light it up and all of a sudden I'm, looking at a, a Dell offer or something the next year, who knows? Um, so I was like, okay, so go to this team in Slovakia. It's this like tiny little town called Detva. Detva the, yeah. Yeah. About four hours from Bratislava. And so I had to fly into Vienna, take a, take a bus or something to Bratislava where the team met me because there was all this border stuff going on with COVID and whatever. Um, it was it was a weird weird experience getting there. So I so I get there. Team goes, oh yeah, we got you an apartment. Well, I get there. It's not an apartment. It's like a dorm, and I'm like, oh, no. I'm in like a dorm thing. I don't even have a bathroom in my room. Like I got to share a bathroom with like these young kids that are on the team, which is not terrible. Like my girlfriend didn't go. If she, if she would have came with me, I, we would have been there about three days, and then it would have been like she's like, I'm getting out of here. Um, but it was just an old building, and like. You know, I didn't have a kitchen or anything like that. So I was like one of this one restaurant that in town that was open to eat every day for like every single meal. So I didn't have, didn't have like, I didn't even have a fridge in my room to get some cereal and milk or something, you know? Um, so that, that was a little bit disappointing. And then like, I was going there for like no money. Like it was like 1500 euros a month or something. Just, I just wanted to play. Um, so then you know get there and they're like oh we're gonna ease you into it so the first game scratched because i've only been there for a couple of days and practices or whatever next game i get in i'm on a line with like a 17 year old slovak kid and a, and a 19 year old slovak kid great kids like you know really enjoyed them as people but not not great players right. um so they're there I am like playing like five minutes a night, just trying to do something just to get up all, a line or whatever. Then I get scratched. Then I got the owner coming in yelling at me in Slovakian. And I'm like, look at one of the guys. I'm like, what did he just say to me? He goes, he said, he said, he wants you to fight someone. I'm like, well, I hope you realize he didn't sign a fighter, but I will go fight someone. So then I, go out there, get into it in front of the net, get into a fight. The owner's happy. I get put up to the third line for the next game. Midway through the second period, I'm, I'm down the fourth line, whatever. So I bet you I'd played like, I think I played like six games in a month and a half. And I had about a combined 20 minutes of ice time. <laughs> so it's was, it was tough to get anything done, you know, like, you know, trying to contribute where I can, but you know, I wasn't, really put in an opportunity to do anything. And I'm like, well, they just like, they invested this time and money into getting me over here, um, you know, whatever. So I'm like, just gotta wait, just gotta wait my turn. Some, something will come up. The frustrating part about it was that like, 
we weren't if we were on like a eight ten game winning streak and I, i'll be like i'm happy just to sit here and, and keep winning games with the boys but i think we were like four and six or something like hey well something's not going right here i think they like, gotta switch something up and i got this owner coming in and he sees like this mafia guy so i wasn't he's like yelling at me in slovak and i'm like telling him to fuck off in english and we just like can't communicate so whatever he ends up I get, one morning I wake up and I got, a, it's just like a WhatsApp message with a flight ticket. And it's like, so I send it back. I send a message back. I'm like, what is this? And they're like, uh, you don't score, you go home. <laughs> and I'm like, <laughs> all right, see ya. Okay. I guess, I guess I'm being fired. Um, so whatever I go into the owner's office and I'm like, okay, well, whatever, you know, sorry, it didn't work out. I, I feel like I maybe got a little bit shortchanged here. Like I, I would have loved to give you guys an opportunity to see that I could, what I could do type of thing. Um, Cause you know, we got guys there that, uh, that, you know, like Trevor Cox was uh, one of my teammates there. Now he's playing in Cardiff and, you know, he was like yeah. on the first line there and stuff. I was like, well, you know, like if I had gotten an opportunity to play with Coxie, like we'd be having a completely different conversation right now. Like yeah, type of thing. Um, but he can't understand what I'm saying. Um, his assistant is in there and she's kind of like translating to me. They send whatever they get me in a, a cab or whatever, send me to Vienna. Um, well, they didn't actually book me a flight ticket. They didn't want to pay for it. So they just like, I get to Vienna. I don't have a flight ticket or anything. Like they canceled it or not actually booked it. I don't know. So I call back to the, I'm talking to the, she's like, oh yeah. Like uh, this owner is like, he's like evil. Like he didn't actually book you a flight. Like okay. just wanted to get you out of here. So I'm sitting in Vienna and I'm like, okay, well, I guess I got to book a flight home. Um, so I get a, get a flight home um, after speaking with my agent. I'm like, well, maybe like there's another team that I could jump on. It was too late at that point. So I, so I go home and then I, like, when I get back, I get this email from this, uh, I get this email from the receptionist there where they had like somehow been able to put the money in my account. So it looked like I was paid, but then the owner had like pulled it back out somehow in this Slovakian bank account. So uh, yeah, ended up with nothing and, you know, had to pay for a flight and yeah, so whatever. Penny trip. <laughs> Yeah, so it was just like an all it was just it was just a complete fuck around. Um funny oh, story nice, was it to get back to Guilford after that. <laughs> well, yeah. yeah, I got mean, back to Guilford. Like oh, I was wow. just like, yeah, this is you know, but I you know, I don't wanna I don't wanna rip on Slovak. Yeah, that was one experience. Like, you know, I got guys I I know guys that play there and, and they have good experiences and obviously there's little cultural differences like with their you know their doctors or something if something's bugging you there they just give you a shot of something to make the pain go away but they don't actually deal with the the injury or whatever but um actually you might have read this story before but the uh the captain of my team in slovakia there he was the guy that uh had served time in jail for murder oh okay (laughs) oh okay Uh, so he whatever he got caught up in um some situation i i'll let you guys google it after but he uh yeah murdered a guy went to prison oh came back. did so you ever actually did you ever uh, meet uh I, I know he wasn't playing uh for Dever at the time but the guy that leads to all-time pims is a guy called joseph sladdock did you come across him he he played over here in the uk uh I've heard the name, but no, I didn't come across him at all. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to say before I finish that story about the guy. Oh, sorry. No, I he was like a, an amazing guy, the the captain. Like he he was just like he was so nice to me and everything. So it's just it's a crazy story that that was what what he had done, and then the turnaround that he had had was like I don't know. I felt completely comfortable around him. He was like an awesome awesome guy spoke good english he'd actually played in the whl a bit and nice to see him turn his life around like that yeah i love that let's uh <laughs> let's go 
we, we, we've kept you for a while. I want to kind of get near the end of this interview, but I want to talk about the run you boys had last year. You end up finishing second in the Elite League. What was it like being a part of that? And as you said before, Guildford would never have really expected to to be there, even though you've never finished any lower than fifth. But second was was one hell of a, an achievement for you guys. Yeah, I mean, you know, we we've the past few years like that, you know, that's what we've been kind of building towards. And like, you know, you know, Digger, um, like he's a good coach and uh, he wants to win and he's a great guy and he's fair. Um, uh, he's always kind of like we've him and I have always had these conversations like, you know, we're not going to be expected to be in the, this conversation with the Cardiff and Nottingham and Sheffield and, and Belfast, but like in our dressing room, like from, from me as a coach, you would say, and from, from you as like our, our captain, like that's gotta be the expectation that we set is that like, you know, we're, we're in the conversation with these teams and we're better than some of them or, you know, hopefully better than all of them. Um, so the first couple of years, you know, it was coming in and it was like, okay, well, we're, we're just, we're just going to try and compete, you know, we're going to see how this goes type of thing. Um, but as we've, as we've gone on and on now, like the expectation is, is to like win every night. Um, and the expectation from the, t uh, on the players has been backed by the team and in the fact that they brought in Rupert for the strength and conditioning, you know, we brought in these other things. We, we travel the day before to our games, uh, in Scotland and you know we're we're doing these different things that like show an investment in the players to now turn around and, and like deliver that result on the ice and with the success that we had last year I think that that's just gonna like take it the next step further where it's like okay well you know second place when you look back on it it's like oh it was a good accomplishment but you're still just a loser like everyone else you know yes that you so, get the job done right yeah and so you look back on these things like it's i mean it's so easy to look back on it you know like last year we come in and we had maybe some guys that weren't ready for the start of the year type of thing uh go into the first weekend of the season and we lose uh the first game in overtime nottingham lose the second game to sheffield so we just gave up three points right there well what did we end up at the end of the year two yeah. points out of first so now we got you know Rupe doing this unbelievable summer training program um you know we're gonna have guys ready right off the start those four points or those three points we gave up at the beginning of the year they might be the difference next year uh at the end of the season so it's like these little things that <clears throat> that the club's doing to like not only invest in the players to give them everything they need to be their best, but like also set that expectation where it's like, okay, well, you know, it was second place, but second place is just like everyone else. You're still not, you're still not lifting a trophy. So that's the goal, you know, and it might piss some of the bigger clubs off that, that Guilford's now in the conversation, but you know, this club's not going anywhere. If anything, it's just going to keep getting better and better. Guildford fans are going to love you here saying that. Oh, we right, welcome Mark, that. Let's get some cheesy questions for this round or up here. Best player you've ever played with? Uh, okay, it seems kind of redundant when we've talked about some of these guys already. But, um, yeah, the best player you've ever played with? Um, well, obviously, Nuge would be one of them. And, yeah. you know, um, just there's been so many good players along the way. But, like, you know, like Cruz Reddick, like as as a guy that I played like on a line with, and you know, like how how he didn't like make his way to the NHL. I don't know. Like he got, away. I guess he was a bit undersized and stuff, but he was like awesome. It, you know, that's just saying guys that weren't the the guys that made it to the NHL. Like obviously the Matt Dumbas, Darcy Kempers, like these guys were, you know, Nuges, like they're Brandon Sutter, like these guys were awesome. But there's been so many along the way. Mark. If I had played with you, I would have said you. Yeah. No, don't do that. Mark, what, uh, <laughs> let's go somewhere else. Where do we want to go? Yeah, let's go toughest. Toughest play you've played with or against? Um, Well, I played with Mark Mark Lewis for a brief little bit yeah, in uh, junior. Nice. Um, yeah, with or against? Well, I don't know if you remember, like, 
think it was like 2018. I think Manchester had like four guys that were legit yeah. heavyweights and just what well, you said, you spoke with Jay Rosa, like that guy. I yeah. obviously never had to Bias. get into a fight with him myself, but like these guys were nuts, man. They're so tough. Like, uh, unbelievable. Big boys uh, as well, like, eh? Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, I think back on some of the guys that I played against in junior that like ended up being like rough and tough guys in the NHL. And like, yeah, there's just, just so many guys that were not so much anymore, but like the guys that are, they're just so tough, like fight anybody, do anything type of guys, you know? Being first guys, man. What about yeah. the, uh, the biggest beauty you've ever played with? Like oh, the locker big... room guy. Who's 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 the best locker room guy? Um, yeah, that's. I mean, you know these these the, a lot of these British guys are just so funny. Like I I just laugh. You know, like like Benny's just talking all the time. Like, is at some points you're just like got to leave the room just so you can hear yourself think for a minute. Everything's just so like Lacko is so funny. Griff like they're. They're just, they're just, they're hilarious. Um, they, you know, I played with some guys in the coast that just had like stories that I, I can't repeat on this. <laughs> you know, like I, I feel so blessed actually. Like, it's not just something you say, but like, I feel so blessed to play with so many guys that I like, I sometimes I'm just walking around. And I like laugh at something that that guy said at one point or something that guy did, you know? So I, I can't even pinpoint it. There's just, there's so many. Love that. What about the best coach you played for? Um, I really like playing for Digger. Uh, um, you know, yeah, he's, he's a player's coach. He lets you do your thing. He'll tell you when you're shit, um, but he'll do it in a way that makes you want to go out there and battle a little harder for him. Um, you know, I've always played for some guys in, in junior that, kind of that more old school mentality um, where it was like a lot of yelling and screaming. And I, I like those guys, but you know, it's nice with a coach like Digger where um, you, you're genuinely like excited to go to practice, whether it was a, a bad weekend or a good weekend, like you get there and, and Digger's like, he's got a good attitude. He's upbeat and he genuinely like cares for the players outside of just trying to get goals and assists out of them like you know he wants to he wants you to to know that you're enjoying your time that everything's good at home type of thing so i would yeah i would have to say digger yeah Good job. right how we'd like to finish things off here is with a story for the boys so if there's any stories that you haven't got out there already in the episode that you can think of one to leave the fans with um the, f the floor is yours fergie <laughs> Oh, uh, put me on the spot, Johnny on the spot. <laughs> yeah. Should have, uh, should have texted me this last night. I would have, uh, I would have thought of something. Um, you know, we've just we we've had like, we've just had so many so many laughs like in Guilford, especially like we go to we got this this uh, pub we go to in in Guilford, and um, like we're always playing darts there. Throwing, throwing a few arrows as they say and uh like i walk around the corner from i think i was just going to get another another pint or something and one of the guys has just a dart stuck in it <laughs> <laughs> he's like gone up to like get his darts and one of the other guys wasn't really paying attention he threw the dart and it was just stuck right near, <laughs> through the clothes there's this we we're all just laughing. He left it in there for about half an hour. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I can't imagine that felt too good. Oh, yeah. No, oh, I think it went just like right through the meat there. Like it was no problem. <clears throat> all good. You know, we've had, yeah, we've had some some good ones like guys forgetting their skates or something and having to wear another guy's skates. And <laughs> that would be a nightmare for me. <laughs> oh, I could. <laughs> I'm not think of anything worse i'd rather not play yeah i'm i'm not i'm not picky about my gear but like i need it to be my stuff you know yeah yeah you know once it's mine like, it's mine like my skates are beat to shit but like they're my beat, yes. to, <laughs> beat to shit skates not somebody else's like my, the biggest thing for me is my skates that's why i would struggle 
my rocker, obviously the length of the blade, my rocker's like way here under my, I skate on like this tiny amount of blade. So like, then you'd put like brand new blades on it. It feels like you're skating in fucking speed skates. Yeah. Well, are you, are you like leaning forward? Yeah. Yeah. I like yeah. that too. I don't think I'm that small. Like I think mine's like a 11 foot forward or something they call it, but yeah, um, yeah you, you can't get on someone else's skates and expect to be the same I mean, if you, your skates are beat to shit, you should get the CCM guys on the podcast, get them to hook you up with a pair of skates. Uh, fuck them. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a bar guy. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not even... I mean, in fact, actually, all the guys from CCM that uh, are involved are all big-time beauties, ex-players and stuff over here. A few, yeah. few good old Canadian boys. Like, There's some, some good lads involved. But, Baggy, we've kept you for a long time. We yeah. appreciate your time. Guildford fans, if you're watching along, you know you want to hit that subscribe button. We're bringing you more of their players throughout the season 23-24. Make sure you subscribe. Make sure you share this with all your Guildford Flames fans. And we will see you guys for another episode very, very soon. Peace. Peace. Thanks for having me, guys.